Hello, and welcome to another edition of Lost in Criterion. I'm John Patrick Owatari Dorgan with my co host. I am the Adam Glass. Uh, this week we are watching Fritz Lang's first talkie, his 1931 production of M. <laughs> Thank you for using the word talkie, Adam. <laughs> I wanted to. Hey, listen, it's, uh, it's, uh, no, no, period it's appropriate. Thank you. We're gonna watch a talkie now, uh, are we going to talk like this for the rest of the episode? No, no, we shouldn't. We shouldn't oh, do that. Okay. In other news... I'm uh, sort of disappointed, Adam. <laughs> well, you can if you want, but it's already annoying me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do it anymore. My, my face is getting sweaty. So this is Fritz Lang's 1931 M, uh, which uh, is is a pro psychological thriller. Is it talking? It's, uh, it's his first. It's his first picture with sound, um, though it, it certainly doesn't overuse sound. It's, it, it uses the sound very well, but it also uses. Although it's nice that his first film with sound, yeah. I was not aware of this. Uses the sound to solve yes. the crime. Yes. Thought that it is very... was neat. If I had known that this was his first sound film. I, that would have been way more impressive yeah, while I was yeah. watching. Yeah, I mean, that is that is certainly off-screen sound features features very dramatically into this. Um, uh, you know, sound sound adds to the scenes, which is not you know when movies first started using sound, that was not always a thing. You know, no, 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 no. The fact that the sound is yeah. useful, the sound is useful rather than just being overbearing and annoying, is yeah. a fairly rare thing this yeah. early in. And the use of the use of silence, the use Film of silence audio. in this movie to, to add drama to a scene. You know, we get a lot of sort of overhead shots of police filling the streets in quietness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is the only part that bothers me about that is every so often the film speaks, yeah. which is a little yeah. bit during those scenes, I guess, to yeah. move things along. And I'm like, when did this become a Benny Hill scene? Yes. I don't know what happened here. Yes, Why are we moving it? Things like are a little sped up sometimes. It's very, it's very, it's it's off putting to say the least. Yeah, yeah it is. It's really yeah. a little bit. Um, this is also uh, Peter Lorre's first major film role. Um, he plays he plays our villain here. Um, it is his first villainous role. He was a comedic. A com- yeah, and he <laughs> would later go on to play yes. Doctor House and several other important no, characters. No, that's, oh, that's a no. different Lorre. Uh, no, Peter Lorre, uh, oh, you know, yeah, he, he's been, you know, he's he's a villain, a villainous character yeah. in a lot. I mean, he has the greatest yes. eyeballs. Oh, ever. His eyes, his Basically. eyes are wonderful, and we get we get a very great, great use of his eyes in the final scenes of the movie. Oh yeah, yeah. well, we get a couple but, really uh, good ones, but yeah, that when he's looking over his shoulder yeah, for that yeah. M, yeah, or sees that yeah. M, oh, that's beautiful. Um, so he has he has wonderful eyeballs. Uh, he was a comedic stage actor, which you know you need good eyes to be a comedic actor on the stage. Um, uh, this movie was actually banned by the Nazis for being offensive. They attempted to shut it down uh, prior to production, uh, despite despite the fact that the Nazis weren't in power in 1931. It's still a Weimar public. Yeah, uh, yeah. The uh, the owner of the studio that was to be mm. uh, to produce the film uh, was a Nazi sympathizer, and uh, the original title of the movie was "The Murder Among Us." And the Nazi party said, "Oh, that's going to be a movie criticizing us because." Look at us. Um. <laughs> right, right. right. Well, so self-aware for a yes, group of murderers. Yes. Uh, wait, wait. We are a group of murderers <laughs> living among, uh, among among our fellow Germans. Yeah. Hey. Uh, so the story is the That's story slander. is that they said uh, they they rejected it based on the title um, and assumed that uh, it would be about them. And you know, you could read it as a sort of parable about the rise of Nazism, but it's weird. Uh, Lang did not mean it as such. Uh, for, yeah, and who would well, be the Nazis? you know, this sort of always be vigilant against events the against criminals? the murderers among you. I suppose watch out for what's coming. But I still argue that the criminals who Shanghai him, take him to the basement, well, are the yeah, Nazis. Yeah, it's you know that's a very that's a very it's a kangaroo. Everybody kangaroo is report. the Nazis. Everyone's in Nazis okay. in purgatory. It's, uh, no, but uh, but this movie this movie was Lang's favorite of all his movies, uh, according to Lang himself. Um, well, kind of understandable. This is an, an excellent, excellent movie. Film. Um, and and as he has said, you know he, uh, you know the entire point of this movie is summed up in the last line. Um, 
and it's it's to its detriment, I think, <laughs> the way it's summed up yes, in the last line. It's so but the entire point of this movie is is to convince mothers to pay more attention to their kids to keep them from being murdered. Yeah, be more aware yeah. of where your children yeah. are. This, uh, you know, it was originally kind of a rip from the headlines it's, thing. Yeah. A lot of the... Uh, a lot of the murders they talk about in the opening section, uh, all attributed to the same person within the film, were murders of children around Germany in the in the years directly prior. Really? Um, the t- well, so I guess it's kind yeah. of understandable that he might yeah, make a film yeah, exactly. like that is the point, but it's, saying it is totally unnecessary. Yeah. It's like it's like a two by four yeah. over the head. It's like yeah. we what? You know, we got it, Fritz, man. Yeah, We're and that on is board. that is definitely. Murderer takes your children as they walk home from school because you don't yeah. give a shit. Yeah, done. Understood. Um, oh, this is um, speaking of the uh, Nazis not liking this, uh, and and also not uh, understanding the movie. Um, <laughs> they the, do that a lot, yeah. and uh, we've actually this has come yeah, up the, multiple the, times. Already the Nazis in our hating the movie and, and because they don't understand it. Yeah, not because, but mainly because they yeah, don't understand. Yeah. Uh, it. The uh, the absolutely absolutely terrible. It goes without saying. Terrible. Uh, Nineteen forty. Uh, German anti-Semitic propaganda, the uh, the Eternal Jew, which uh, cites a lot of different media sources to complain about Jews, uh, complains about Peter Lorre, uh, and Peter Lorre's not actually a Jew, um, but that's uh, that's beside the point. Um, not yeah, relevant. The, that's not relevant to yes, a Nazi. The argument. Jew Lorre in the role of a child murderer, not the murderer, but the victim is guilty, according to this film, which presents the criminal sympathetically to gloss over and excuse the crime, which it doesn't do. It doesn't. It it doesn't no, present him. It, it, it does actually, present him sympathetically, but not to gloss over the movie or gloss over the point. Right, and it certainly does not present his victims yeah, as, as victim. yeah, in the wrong. Absolutely not. It's really I well, like I was talking about uh, before we started recording. Um, I was amazed at the way this film portrays this type of um, yeah. insanity. This, this, I was, it was so conscientious of the fact that Laurie's character, while not necessarily sympathetic, is not yeah. evil, per yeah. se. He, he, the, the, he, he is, an, I cannot yeah. control and himself. That's, and he, and, and Laurie does a very good job <clears throat> of making that. Yeah, he sells that. He sells that and he does his it. Acting. He, yeah. He's an amazing actor and it's, it's kind of unfortunate that, that. His amazing acting is kind of wasted on a bunch of uh, bunch of random villains throughout the rest of the noir um, era. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. But no, he's he's great. Um, it's, yeah, it's very interesting. Um, this movie is also and and you know a, another point of it being amazing, being Lang's first sound movie is that this is uh, one of the first movies to lo- use the idea of a leap motif. Um, you know, here it's in the Hall of Mountain King is very much tied to uh, Lori's character, Hans. Um, and, right. you know, we hear that and it's even, you know, it's used off screen so that we know he's there. And it is ultimately what unravels him is that he whistled it. He whistles it whenever he's feeling overcome with his urge to kill, to kill children. Um, and he whistles it in front of a balloon salesman, a blind balloon salesman, who later hears him whistle it again and knows that it's the same person because he recognizes the whistle and he remembers when he heard it last. That he, yeah, that he heard it the same day that yeah. Earl was murdered. It's... <clears throat> no, it... Oh, no, yeah. man. Yeah, the sound is very yeah. impressive. Like, this is the kind of thing that you would find in a modern yeah. police drama. A lot of the thing. It's really amazing. I, I, I think I've made it clear in the podcast before, but I'm a huge fan of police yes. dramas. Specifically, like... I love procedurals. This one's a bit weird because the police are not ultimately the ones who are good at being yeah. police. Um, but nonetheless, it is a procedural yeah. in a lot of ways. And it does all the things a procedural does. We've got smoking in a room. <laughs> we've, we've got talking around a table. We have a dude with a compass drawing a circle around the crime yeah. scene while they like at, while they talk about searching and interviewing Interi- people. Interrogating witnesses. And... Yeah, but with no yeah. dialogue. <laughs> Instead, just heavy music. It's got everything. Yeah, yeah. there's. It's yeah. ridiculous. It's really, it's really wonderful. Um, and and actually, that smoking reminds me of one of 
one of my favorite little moments is that the amount of smoke in the room uh, <laughs> continues, continues to build to show the passage of time. We we cut from the police and back. Which is brilliant, oh, yeah. because by the time we get to the end, it's like... <laughs> Yes, you can you hardly really see. Can. You really can hardly see. There's some just shapes yeah. moving. It's um, the camera. I like to believe that the actors were all forced to just <laughs> probably the entire probably. time. Um, you know, the camera work in this movie is absolutely amazing as well. Um, you know, it's very, very, uh, very German expressionist. Um, but you know, there's but there's just there's a lot of really interesting things they do, like uh, you know, um, when we uh, when we follow the laundry lady upstairs. And she has a conversation with the little girl's mother, who, who's who's murder. The little girl whose murder is ultimately what what sets off the plot of the movie. Um, they the camera jumps 180 degrees in the middle of a sentence, and it just the editing yeah. there is so amazing, um, <laughs> really tight, really great, and it could be it it be. Yeah, and considering the yeah. era and the other kind of films that were generally <laughs> yeah. being made at that time. This is yeah. beautiful. It's really well done. Very, yeah. There's um, like I said, there's some problems with like speed <laughs> yes. a few times, where you're like, why are the policemen yeah. all walking so fast down those stairs and stuff like that? But like, in general, no, it's just great. Yeah. And then we get some like sort of aerial shots, which are really unexpected. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, there's yeah. there's there's one wonderful moment uh, when we first meet. Lori, and it's it's not even when we first meet him because we don't even see we don't see his face until about a half hour into the movie. We don't know his name oh, yeah. until an hour into the movie. We are really like as soon as you see him, you're like, oh man, he's totally <laughs> yeah. the murderer. But they don't tell you that he's yeah, the murderer. Even, even when you at see that him, time. it's not it's not necessarily explicit. You're, you you realize that he's the murderer just because yeah. of what yeah. he looks like and what yeah. he is. But when we when we like his when we weirdness. first see him, when he walks up to the girl, the girl is reading the poster about him, about the murders. Mm. And he steps up and we see his shadow fall on the word murderer. Yeah. On the poster. Right? That's amazing. And that's, you know, it's highlighted and it's <laughs> it, 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 it's no, it's, it's great. It's pretty yeah, subtle but it's wonderful. wonderful. Um there's you know, there's also no on-screen violence. Uh, Lang says that was an active choice for the child murders because, you know, then then the viewer kind of fills in whatever atrocities. Right, it's that know. whole whatever happens in your head is way worse than anything yeah, I can show yeah. you. And, and, you know, that's, kind of idea. that's certainly... And understandable, too, why he would kind of pull yeah. that anyway. Like, why would he want yeah. to show that? Like, there's no... It would accomplish nothing. Yeah, they do it. It doesn't move the story along. There's no blood. They no do it less uh, a little later into a, to a great, there's a great discretion shot, actually, uh, when the criminals, um, and so the criminals are, are after the murder, too, because the increase, the increased police scrutiny uh, has made it impossible for them to yeah, be criminals. So, so they want to catch him so that the police will relax and they can go back to doing doing their normal crimes. Well, and also they talk about how he's ruining yeah. their good name. It's kind of a valid point that like they are criminals, yeah. not psychopathic murderers. But they 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 find him and they follow him to this uh, to this building, this office building, uh, and in trying to figure out how many other guards they and there are there, uh, they catch one watchman. And they're interrogating him. They've got him tied to a chair, and he's not talking. So there's this threat of a punch. And, and as we get the threat of the punch, everybody who's watching outside of the room, and we see this, turns they, around. They, they crowd, oh, no, goes they in, crowd right? toward yeah. the window. So yeah. we don't see the connection of the punch. We just see the suggestion that it's about to happen. Yeah, and then, and then, and then a howl. howl. Yes. The, the scream, we can't hear anything that's going on in that room. Um because we're outside, but but we still hear the howl of, of him being hit. Yeah, it's really, there's so much, so much good about this movie. No, there, it, oh, man. Here's what I'm going to say, the only, so we've <clears throat> talked about the final yeah. sequence, the unnecessary moral yes. statement. The only other thing I didn't like in the film, ball shot of the <laughs> primary <laughs> detective, like homicide detective. What the hell was going on yeah, there? Like we spend like a minute on his testicles. It's a really low shot of him leaning it's back in a chair. Really upsetting. Yeah, it's 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 weird that that exists. Um, I, I do not yeah, understand I that shot. It was totally weird and unnecessary. Yeah. It's like 
more it feels more like the director maybe just wanted to play around it was like i wonder what this will look I, like i think i think maybe that might be true um like and really didn't think that one through he's like man i really wish we had shut maybe, that from a different maybe we're angle. just not familiar with the actor maybe he was very famous for his balls and uh right because you could almost see a bulge too yes. it's weird like, cause you spend enough time on it where it's almost impossible not <laughs> yes, to look. It's right. It, it's center it's, screen. Those are those are that's framed, yeah. right? Yeah, and they're huge, right? Like the, the that area it of his body takes right up most garage. of the screen. Yeah, and it's like, why? I don't want to look at this. And he's sweaty yeah. and talking on the phone, and it's like, oh, is this building yeah. suspense or just to make like, I don't know. Um, but yeah, this this movie. Yeah, that doesn't necessarily still build suspense, but this movie is a very suspenseful movie, you know. Oh, and yeah. and it, it this, dwells. It's really weird because we we just finished with another movie that's supposed to be kind of a mystery, yeah. right? That does just a lousy job of telling yeah. a mystery. Yeah, and this just does such a good job. Yeah. Even once we know who the killer, I mean, we build suspense for a while before we even find out who the murderer yeah. is. And then, even once we know, just will he get caught? Yeah. Like, it's, it's, how? Who's gonna catch him? And the, uh, the the dwelling on the paranoia and and the the infighting that you know the false accusations and and what this does mm -hmm. what this does to a community of people. Um, yeah, it's really fascinating yeah. to watch. Yeah, like where yeah. they're and it's very yeah. There, people are like getting into fights over. Yeah. Businessmen, businessmen are accusing then, each that other. Big, big guy gets yeah. a yeah. That big guy, they they that guy with the yes. glasses gets, gets harassed by the, the street. very tall man, and that's a that's a great shot too. Yeah, we I get, love like, that shot too. The where the tall man guy. is like fifty yeah, feet tall, looking, yeah, looking down at him, um, and it's just this mousiness looking up. It's a it's a great shot. Um, one thing that I do love is when we first see Laura's face. Uh, it's in the middle of this sort of section montage of police proceduralness. The uh, a a city official and the chief of police are discussing what's going on uh, as far as the investigation goes, and yeah. we get inner cuts of you know them, them doing, doing those, those things. things, which is again totally a police yeah. procedural yeah. standby. It's a, it's a, it's a, yeah. Well, we can't show you everything that happened because it took five <laughs> yes. days. So we're going to just give you a rough idea yeah. and, like, show you an example of that thing but that during, happened. We even see it in, um, what's it, um... I Am Love. Uh, Akira yeah. Kurosawa I Am Love does that, too. They do it a little bit yeah. longer than this, but that's a longer movie. But, yeah, but, I mean, it's still, it's, but, a, yeah. it's a trope yeah. that I think we almost see kind of established yeah. here. Yeah, certainly. Um, but, yeah, uh, there's one moment during that montage is, is the first time we see Lori's face. And that is, uh... As as a psychologist <laughs> yes. describes the very clear madness of whoever did this, that you know, the same, you know, as Laurie himself says later, kind of establishing that whoever did this probably can't even control himself when he does it. Um, right, and that maybe when he's not doing it is yeah. not so weird. Yeah. It's not yeah, and when he's when he's not normal. doing it, he's just a normal member of society, and and it's basically as he says that. We cut to Lori. We have Lori yeah. in his apartment, <laughs> playing with his face in the <laughs> playing mirror. Playing with his face in the mirror. It's so weird. Yeah. yeah. Which is pretty, pretty much the him playing with his face in the mirror tells you he's a murderer <laughs> yes. somehow. It tells him he's unstable. Like, I guess he's he's trying to look. Which is weird because I play with my face in the mirror he's all the trying time. Trying to look at himself. Like, am I a murderer? Well, have you have you ever killed any children? No, but every so often I play with my face in the mirror. It's a, it's a thing. Stepping stones. I think people... Stepping stones. Right, right. I'm Listen, like though, two, three steps away from. At the same murder. time, Pat, I've I've read Catcher in the Rye, and I've never tried to assassinate anyone. So that's true. So have I. Oh man, I'm doomed. <laughs> uh yeah. Um, one thing I really I really like early on, uh, is is this sort of. You know, when we get to the suggestion that the first little girl has been murdered, um, the mother, we followed the mother and she's, the girl's not home, the girl's not home, she starts calling for her. She runs out, she yells her name, and we get the echo of the mother's voice calling for her daughter uh, over, you know, a bunch of empty set pieces, the empty playground, 
an empty chair where her dinner should be, and then we get one of the field, and the ball we saw the little girl playing with rolls on the screen and stops right in the center. Hmm. Um, and then we uh, we cut to the balloon that we saw the murderer buy for her earlier, um, stuck in some power lines, and that's it. You know, and there's you could read this if you really wanted to. Um, you know, and it's 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 part of that. It's part of that. You know, whatever horror you want it to be, that's how horrific it is. You know, there's there's no evidence not to suggest that he's not just killing them. You know, and it, it, yeah, we have no information. Yeah. yeah, we build our own nightmare yeah. for ourselves, yeah. and you know, it can it can get deeper and deeper as you want. You know, and we don't know how he's killing them. There's never any discussion about. Right, and it's really, which is actually a really interesting thing to see in these kind of, because you don't really see that in later dramas of this type. Yeah. We almost always in dramas of this type later, we find out about the crime via the discovery of the remains of the dead. Especially in modern crime dramas like this. And it's really interesting that they never seem to find, well, they do mention that they find the girls. Yeah. They, they do found mention bodies. the fact that they're finding the girls, but, but there's no. They don't mention how they died. Yeah. They don't mention what happened to them at all. They don't mention like where they're found or anything. Not apparently the the state of those bodies is not relevant to the investigation, yeah. which I guess maybe fits for 1931. I'm not sure what the state of police investigation procedures well, were. At, at the same time, we do have a certain amount of forensics. They take they take. Uh, they're yeah they're taking they take fingerprints off the postcard he sends to the paper. Um, and they argue that, yeah, they say, well, we're trying, yeah. but there's a thousand fingerprints on yeah, this thing. because it was sent through the mail and everybody's touched it. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was just, it's, yeah, I mean, we do, it's just weird. It's it's interesting that we start having, or the f- story starts having already established that, like, we already know there is a murderer. Yeah. He's out there. He's already killed eight yes. people. We don't start with, which is just a different procedure than you see in most modern police yeah. dramas. It, well, it's... We have, yeah, we already have a murderer. Yeah. He's out there, he's murdered, and everybody's already scared yeah. of him. We start, we start in the fear instead of, instead of trying to establish the fear. But we still, we still right, draw which us... Right, is nice. I mean, it's an inter- it makes for an interesting Yeah, and story. The, way, the way it humanizes that fear and draws us in really fast with, with focusing on the mother of the latest victim. For the first little bit, well, focusing yeah, focusing on the even, victim herself, yeah. and then going. To well, her. yeah, the build up as we see her, yeah. and you're like, "Oh, she's doomed. Yeah. This is awful." It's a really like you can really feel the feelings yeah. that 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 Fritz Lang wants us to yeah. feel. He's he does a very good job of making us feel what we're supposed yeah, to feel. He's, he's very very good at that, which makes the Nazis all the more confusing. <laughs> yeah. Because how can you watch this movie? Because you have to how be can you watch mentally this movie? disturbed. Yeah. And not feel symp- like empathetic for the mother yeah. and the victim. How do you watch this movie? Like that's the, I mean, they, you build that right at the beginning. You are horrified about what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe that's. Uh... I was going to. Say, there we I was go. going to say Nazis maybe the bad. Nazis are paranoid. Um, but I. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh man, that never would happen. <laughs> um, no, it's just like it's a little bit. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, that alone defeats the argument that the the victim is. Yeah. Yeah, the the bad is the is the problem. Yeah. I mean, you know that this little girl didn't do anything yeah. wrong. You watch her fall into this trap, and you are terrified for yeah. her. Yeah, and it works. It works so well. Yeah. Oh yeah, and everything from that point works very well. Like you get, we get, we when they set up the fact that the criminals have to do something about it, you totally believe yeah. that because you watch the police shaking them and down. And the, the fact that that whole thing. That their meeting is paralleled, and and you know they're finishing each other oh, line, yeah. in each other's lines as they cut between the oh, meeting of wonderful. the criminals and the meeting of the uh, the you know the police and and the the, you know, the the upper class of the city the city officials having their meeting talking about it. Yeah, city council yeah, or whatever. Yeah. They're yeah. popping back and forth between the two meetings. They're going on, and <laughs> as the smoke builds, yes. oh, it's yeah. wonderful. Um, there's one interesting thing. The the safe cracker is what the English translation calls him. 
uh, the, the sort of head of the criminal organization, the, the driving force of them finding him and the guy who eventually uh, heads their little kangaroo court at the end, um, is uh, he <laughs> one, one, one place where the Nazis wouldn't be, have been uh, quite so paranoid. Uh, I have read that, uh, you know, obviously, obviously the Nazi, pa the Nazi party was still around at the time and, and the hierarchy was pretty well established within the party before they came to power. Uh, apparently he based his look, uh, very much on, uh, on like Goering, Goering, um, yeah, I yeah, can, the, that's the black leather long coat and the, and the skin tight gloves and the, and the bowler. Yeah. And I, I, yeah. And I think, but at the same time, it's, it's reasonable Considering what was going yeah. on in the country at the time, that that would be your archetypical. Yeah, it's just you know, it's 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 a menacing, man in power. it's a menacing man in yeah, power, menacing man in power. Yeah, look, yeah. and there's a man in sort of a dark power, yeah. not in like official power. Yeah, yeah. because we we're still not in a world where the Nazi Party is an official, yeah. exactly, governing body. Yeah, so yeah, it's it's understandable why he would do that. Yeah, and it comes off quite well. I mean, the safe cracker is. The, the criminal organization is interesting because it is the only part of the movie that's slightly unbelievable. It, it's like, well, it's, they're this organized? They're that organized because they have to be, I think. Uh, yeah, and, and you get into this really interesting question inside yourself because I don't know from the movie whether or not they were organized before or if they become organized because of the well, situation. Well, it, it seems to me the suggestion as that meeting starts is that they are the heads of different sort of, you know, families or guilds or whatnot. The people there are different types of thieves. You know, we have the street... Right, yeah, we got a pickpocket, we've got... We've got the, the street uh, hustler the guy here, the magician doing card tricks, um, you know. And and the first thing the safe cracker asks when he gets in, after he tells them, <laughs> he calls them idiots and tells them to close the blinds, um, the first thing he says is, you know, are you, are you in a position to make decisions for right. everyone? Right, but the way it's so official at the same yeah. time, it kind of sounds like this is the way we start all of our criminal organization meetings. Yeah, he really, he, he's really. And so it's a little bit ambiguous about which it is. He's really following Roger's rules like, there. It's... <laughs> yeah, right. It's like okay, all present, <laughs> yeah. say I. You know, it's like. Yeah, Robert's, Robert's rules of order are apparently yeah. totally applicable in a uh, in a criminal meeting. No, setting. actually, well, I mean, hey, actually, the meeting has to flow. Actually, on on that note, if you've never watched The Wire, that is a show to get into. They eventually use Robert's rules of order uh, in in the Baltimore drug gang organizations. Hey, you know, sometimes you just need yeah. the meeting to move along. Yes, yes. And it's, it's, it's wonderful when that starts to happen. It's really great. But uh, anyway, in this movie, <laughs> a similar thing happens. <laughs> You're out of order. Versus, I've yeah. got, but now I've got to watch this movie. Now, or that TV yeah. show. Cause it's a big investment. But that's it's amazing. Yeah. That's it's a, a great show. It's more, that's Just to get to that yeah. point, I'm going to watch Criminals Use Robert Rules of Work. Yeah. But uh, no, I mean, it's that's the only thing I was a little... But it's a good setup because we want... It's nice to see that, like, it gets so bad that everybody yeah. is taking an active interest Absolutely in solving this everybody. case. And, you know, the, the criminals are always, obviously, have a sort of self-interest in it, um, but at the same time... But so does everybody else. Yeah. I mean, nobody wants their kid to be kidnapped. Yeah. And, and then when, when they call the meeting of the criminals at the end for the kangaroo court, yeah. it... Quite a few of those people are personally invested yeah. rather than yeah. professionally. Like there are women shouting, think, yeah, yeah. Think you, the you don't understand and, because you don't have kids, you know. Yeah, it, it becomes a really yeah. like yeah. oh well, not all these people are doing this just out of yeah. professional self interest. And they they talk about that earlier too, you know, when when they're uh, when they raid that bar and the bartender, you know, tells them, you know, sorry, yeah, these women are are prostitutes, but you know, some of them have kids and they're all. You know, they're they're just as as worried yeah, about and things. Yeah, anyone in anyone in this building would murder the man. Yeah, given half a chance. Yeah. and then they they try to. And, and I yeah. I love that court scene. I love that court scene, and of course, you know, it's we have to. <laughs> I love everything about this movie, but uh, yeah. but that court scene because they they set up 
they set up this kangaroo court, and, you know, obviously they're going to find him guilty because they've already captured him. They know what's going on. <laughs> I love <laughs> that got... they give him an advocate, though. But they give him, yeah, they give him a defense attorney. And the defense attorney makes a pretty good argument. You know, he's shot down. But it... well, Yeah, he's shot down, but it's it's really amazing because he's shot down not because his argument is invalid, not acceptable. He's shot down because this is a court oh, meant yeah. to find him guilty. Yeah, yeah exactly. They uh, they want to find him guilty, but there it's just this, and that's you know that's what makes it a kangaroo court, you know. It's right, exactly. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. If if that weren't the case, but then they it would still be go, real court. they still go through all the motions of of allowing him to defend himself, allowing his, his his defense attorney to speak, even though they try to interrupt him. He he demands to to finish. You know, the defense attorney makes a good defense for him, uh, on the same lines as as what what Hans himself says. Uh, you know, I. I'm compelled to do this. I have no choice in the matter. I just, I, it builds and, we get, and builds we kind and of get builds into the, yeah. and the only relief is to give in. And, and the weird thing about the film is, is that the main topic is, you know, guard your children. Yeah. Like they are precious. Take care of them. But there's also a really strong undercurrent about what do you do with people in this situation, who cannot control themselves, yeah. who do things that are sus- totally unacceptable in society, but are not in their right minds. Yeah, can't just kill them outright because... Yeah, and because we already see that like that leads to just a sort of weird barbarism in yeah. that courtroom scene. This, like, yeah. we must murder this person. I mean, yeah, and it becomes a sort of murder. Yeah. Uh, and the... Uh... And, yeah, the, the 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 gallery there makes us, you know, they they have a good point. What happens? They make very strong arguments yeah. about like what happens when he gets out yeah. or escapes and then does it all over again. And we get into the the debate that people have been yeah. having yeah. about this problem yeah. ever since they discovered that these people have a mental uh, yeah. problem, and it's really fascinating that that is a secondary argument of the film that's not resolved per se. Well. But makes you think about yeah, it. Yeah, the the primary Who's argument right? of the of the movie is that society needs to take care of the kids and and keep an eye on things and make sure nothing wrong is happening. But the secondary is that it is society's responsibility to make sure that elements like this are taken care of as well, are neutralized. Right, and the, we hear yeah, we hear the um, defense attorney, <laughs> I guess, for lack of a better word, yeah. argue that it's the society's responsibility. To render him harmless. Yeah. Not necessarily kill him outright, yeah. but make him harmless. Yeah. You know, I guess the suggestion yeah. there is, is to uh, lobotomize him. But... Yeah, but, you <laughs> but know, I mean... You you know, know. There's a lot of ways to make someone harmless. Well, but we wasn't he already in the register? F- didn't the police find yeah. his name yeah. he, through... He found, they found him because he had been released. Um, right, and then, then, so that adds another layer yeah. of like, well, he's obviously already gone to jail or gone to a mental institute before, yeah. and they weren't able to take care of him. Yeah, but does that mean they have to stop trying? And like, they didn't lobotomize him the first time. Yeah, although they most definitely will this time. Not sure. I'm but this sure. is also 1931, and so there's not a lot of there's not a lot of other medical... choices. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've not gotten into the age of pharmacology really, yeah. and so. Well, give me that hammer. Yes. Uh, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, right. Give me an ice pick. Uh, but, like, it's... It really does get to... But then again, he's not... Lobotomized or not, he's not dead. Yeah. It gets into... It's a very fascinating subject. And it also kind of does say... Take care of your children because... These people are out there, and society tries to take care of them, but won't always succeed. Yeah, and 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 you know, even so, even yeah. when society tries to take care of them, you can't take care of a problem until it presents itself. You can't, right? And you can't rely yeah. on society to watch your children for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, you know, which is yeah, which is unfortunately a very paranoia-inducing uh, uh, lesson. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm surprised that I, I'm curious to know about after this film came out, what German family life was like for a good year or so. Yeah. Like about like as far as like yeah. 
how parents, because like you see in the film, like moms start meeting their, trying to go pick their child up from school. Yeah. Like, and then the daughter, like that one girl, he almost gets away with it. Or one of the ones. Yeah. Where the, he fall, he is following. He says, I wanted to meet you halfway. And the mom's like, why? Like, <laughs> you know why you shouldn't be doing that. I was coming to get you. Yeah. And... Yeah. yeah. There's, yeah. It's a, it's a very, it's very interesting. And it, the movie itself deals with, with that all very well. It shows yeah. what would be happening. It shows realistically what would be happening. It's not. Yeah. What would happen yeah. to mom's. In that situation, although I find it a little unrealistic unreal- that the f- the mom we start with, yeah, is not yet concerned, even though there've been like eight murders. Well, the uh, the poster talks about um, you know it happening outside of Berlin. It's these kids here, oh, those guys okay, there. Um, you know, and I'm not I'm not familiar with it. I'm familiar enough with German place names to know how far. Maybe those are other neighborhoods. I don't really know. Yeah, but, but it's it's suggesting that police think they might be related. Um, it doesn't it doesn't say well. There's a murderer on the loose. It says eh, well, there and right, might and since be. You ta- and well, and then you take into account the fact <sighs> that if this film is semi yeah. based on actual events. Like as you said, that this was a time when murders murders of children were taking place around Germany. Yeah. Then it would also make sense that like. Yeah. That's based on what's happening in the real world at the time. Is like, oh, are these all connected, or yeah. are these all? You know, Lang, one guy, Lang, or is this everybody? Lang names like six different active serial killers. You know, in later interviews, people who were who were later caught but were actively murdering people in Germany when he was making the movie. Um, so, yeah. But, you know, at the same time, there is... I, I, I kind of... My argument kind of falls apart now that I think about it because they're very... They're already marginally concerned because they yell at the kids for... Well, and, and the singing. one mom says, like, well, at least we know they're still there. Yeah, as long as they're singing, we know they're still there. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're singing that terrible murder song, which, you know, it's, no, yeah, but it's, it's, it's just a nursery rhyme. It's no worse than, you know, London Bridges. It's, it's a little right, more explicit, it's, but... Yeah, and it's weird, though, because, like, it, yeah, I just find that those mothers' behavior is a little bit yeah. odd, considering what has already happened. Yeah. They're, because after that last little girl... Yeah, they're concerned, but they're they, not... It goes nuts. Uber concerned. Yeah. Um... Yeah, which I just think is a little bit odd. It is kind of odd. I think I think you're right. But that's how how else do you make a movie, right? Because like if they were already all super concerned, then there's no way that the parents. Yeah, there's no there's no let, there's no way that that girl would get kidnapped. There's no so. rising action if uh, if everybody's already but on high also, alert. Which is also really interesting because that last girl gets nabbed that we see that he get, basically gets caught in the act of right. Yeah. And somehow she still gets nabbed despite the fact that everybody is like yeah, on like. Operating at like one hundred and ten percent. Yeah. So I guess. Yeah, which is kind of obviously kind of where the lesson has a little issue too. You know, you can't. There's you can't. No matter how vigilant you are. Yeah. Yeah. And there's always the argument that, again between freedom and security. So you know, you can Right, you, but I mean, yeah, yeah. but it, he makes a valid point with that. That like. Even we, but it, that, that's not necessarily a detriment to the argument. Yeah. That like, no matter how hard you try. Yeah. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try, yeah, right? Exactly. Like, exactly. So, but yeah, uh, uh, what, yeah. Is, what else we have to talk about? I love watching Hugh, uh, Hugh Laurie. It's not Hugh Laurie, oh. Pat. Hugh Laurie oh, is British and not even I born know. when this movie came out. I know, Adam. <laughs> I know. Well, the first time it was a joke, and this time it was an I accident. Know. I know. Um, Peter Laurie's character locked in that room. Is just fascinating to watch. Yeah, his desperation. Yeah, it's just amazing. As they slowly close in on him, is wonderful. Yeah, I love. And it. his his monologue when he at at the trial, you know, all the all the points where we focus on Peter Lloyd's character are great. Are great because Although he's I such a great. I have to ask a question. I have to wonder about one thing. Okay, why are the criminals so obsessed with catching him? In theory, he's locked in this building. Yeah. They could just p- 
post guys around the building and call the police and just wait for him to come. Or yeah, they could they could call the police, yeah. or they could just wait for him to come out in the morning. I think it's if you've got an entire criminal criminal organization, you could just have enough dudes hanging around. I think it's impossible for him to escape. Part of the point is that they are so desperate to get things back to normal that they don't want to wait one more night. Right, and, and they I kind think, of overreact. Yeah. And the other half... Which is why they all get caught. Yeah. The other half, I think, is that they are so desperate to clear themselves of this that they, they to want the to actual... be the guy who ca- catches them. Um, but and, but that alone makes it sort but, of yeah. weird that they yeah. choose to have a kangaroo court. Because yeah. if they murder Again. him yeah. Even if... in silence, yeah. without the police ever knowing that he is gone... That doesn't fix anything. Yeah, for it doesn't them. fix anything. Because it's going to take it's going to take several months for the police to realize. Wait, yeah. these po- these children murders are not going to happen yeah. anymore. And it is by it is by coincidence that the police even know they have arrived. You know, at the same conclusions that this guy is clearly right. the guy doing it. But it's by coincidence. It's not by anything that the criminals know is happening. And well, you know, and the weird is... thing about it, yeah, is that it's nice to see, though, that the police would have also caught yeah. him. Yeah, That's nice that they've got the right guy yeah. through regular police work, not kind of the weird criminal police work that they do. Well, they do they do, uh, they do do a very Holmesy and uh, Baker Street Irregulars. They they hire all of the, all the right, homeless, yeah. the, the beggars around the city. Right, and, that, and that's... Good. I mean, it makes for an interesting story. It's yeah. just it is nice that the police got to basically the same guy yeah. at the same rough time. Yeah. They don't know where he is, but they know where he will be. Yeah. And and he would have been. You know, unfortunately, yeah, he would have been. Criminal. He would have been directly after another murder. And that is right, you know, which is unfortunate. Yeah. But but they would have caught in the him. context of this story. Yeah, it's yeah. sort of we've already got eight on the plate. Why? I mean, <laughs> yes. What's another dead child? Who well, cares? Well, and then I, I could have lived. I could have lived with the story going a little bit different. Yeah. With the 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 criminal scaring him into fleeing to his home. Yes. And the police nabbing him. Yes. But then we would have had a little bit not would not have as mad as much time for the moral arguments about whether or not. Yeah. yeah. He deserved to die, which made for a very dramatic and compelling scene. So yeah. I understand why they did what they did. And and having or why those... he did what he did. Yeah. Having those arguments in an actual courtroom, um, I think would have. I don't think the state would have responded in the same way. So we would, we would it wouldn't have, have been yeah, very quite much, as dramatic. Very much a different dynamic. If, if, right, if and it, it would have been less. His procedure. life is hanging on the line too, yeah, because yeah. you know, in the regular courtroom, it would have been the judge slamming gavel and saying "silence in the court," yeah, or something yeah. like that, and which is fun in a movie. But it is nice that you can watch the character exhibit true fear that these people are going to kill him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Which man. Which Peter Lorre does a wonderful job of because doing. Because he has, he has great eyes for emotion. Fear, yes, he does. anguish. Yeah. Surprise. It's just... I'm like, kind of curious what they look like when they're happy. <laughs> they and not creepy, just... I'm going to murder a child happy. <laughs> yes, actual legitimate happiness. Um, yeah. Well, we can Google those pictures later. Um, right, right. It goes Google image search. Yes, Peter Lorre. Peter Lorre, not creepy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I can't think of him. You know, I'm really only familiar with him as as the sort of dramatic villain Bad guy. character. Yeah. So, you know, um, he does. Yeah. It. He, uh, but yeah. Well, and he is somewhat sympathetic in this movie, which is yeah. unusual considering yeah. the other well, roles he's, he gets. Yeah. And he's he's more he's sympathetic. Not, I don't know what. The, yeah, but it's not. It's it's our sympathy for him is based solely on his defense. And if you buy into yeah, his it's based defense, on the yeah. And, and well, obviously and we're, also, we're meant to. Yeah, we are meant to, but we're also I think also much more modern than the people who first viewed this film yeah. in our understanding of this. Well, the, the argument the argument is being made for the disorder. Because the every yeah, it man, is. And the it, every and man's it's, reaction. It's the same argument that you yeah. get now. Yeah. The right, every basically. man's the every man's reaction is the reaction of the the people in the gallery of the right. of the people running the court. You know, what's it matter what he says? He still did this. What's it matter? Yeah, we know he did this thing. Yeah, and this thing was evil. Um, 
So, yeah, it doesn't matter whether or not he feels compulsed or whether whether or not he's making the active choice. He still did it. He's still murdered. Right. And as far stopped. as we're concerned, that yeah. means, yeah. yeah. That's enough. So, you know, that, that, that bit is making the argument that, well, that's not enough because, you know, he, he needs help. He doesn't need punishment. He knows what he does is wrong. Right. And, as soon, and we see him remorseful over yeah. his actions. Yeah. But we also see him do them. Yes. And so it's like... So, it's, you know, it's, to, to a point he is presented with sympathy... But at the same time, he is not presented as a right. hero. We don't, in, we yeah, don't, we don't feel we, that he is a good man yeah. or something. We yeah. know that he is basically yeah. a bad guy. But they're not. We're not. We're in no way, as 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 the Eternal Jew puts it, glossing over the crimes or excusing. No, the not crimes. even a little bit. Yeah, not even a little bit. In fact, you the movie. I know that it's about children because yeah. thank thank you, Fritz Lang, for that last sentence. Yes, but really, to me, it was more. A dramatic at that end about what do we do with these people yeah yeah it was it was all about that about and it's and it's in that turmoil you're supposed to yeah. feel inside of yourself about well we watched him we know that he murders children and then you know, yeah we also know that he can't help it and yeah that's more for me was more the main yeah. thing for the and last. That's, that's 20 the punch of the movie because it's it's what it's what you come away from this movie talking about. It's yeah, you don't yeah come away talking about oh we should take better care of our children. Yeah. You come away. That's what you end up feeling to a certain yeah. extent as a parent. Yeah, you think oh man I need to be. You yeah it's really that you come away talking about that yeah. argument about. Yeah. What to do with people in this with this problem? Yeah, but you come away th- worrying about your children. Yeah, and the movie the movie doesn't Very even necessarily present a solution. It just verbalizes no, no. the problem, and it's a time it's a time in humanity's history where that problem wasn't being verbalized. So the yeah. very, well, the very uh, yeah. So in verbalizing the problem, and you know the the whole the Nazi reaction to it, you know the Nazis had attended, uh, the Nazis killed as many. You know, people in asylums as, as anything else, you know they 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 didn't like the mentally disturbed either, you know it's yeah yeah they weren't out to understand this... anything psychologically. Um, yeah, you get into yeah well, it's not you can't go down that road very long without looking in the mirror. Um, so yeah yeah you like and it is in a certain way justifiable that they would feel that this is about them. Yeah. Because again, you we are people. We're talking about people who are at this time actively arguing that the mentally handicapped should be euthanized. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. so it's not hard to make a mental <laughs> leap to that last mob scene. That yeah. hey, these That's... guys are bad guys. These guys are not terribly sympathetic characters who are arguing that this man should be euthanized. Well, yeah. he won't. He'd be murdered. But you get my yes. drift. Yes. Um. And at that point, we're not terribly sympathetic to the mob. Yeah. They are you... kind of wild. They are somewhat animalistic. There is a yeah. there is a portrayal in their behavior. Even though like the mothers make valid arguments about we you know, what about our children? What about when he does it again? They are portrayed as somewhat uncivilized. Yeah. And that and there is this sort of hint that in the movie, it's not real strong that the belief that murdering a man because of his mental disorder is barbaric. Yeah. It's not the main plot, but it's there. They're, the way they're shown, the way they're kind of out of control is leads you to feel that way a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I forget I mean, where I was going, but I made a point, I think, somewhere. Well, as, at the same time, you know, if you if you put yourself in the mindset of, of a mother... Exactly, uh, worried, it's, you know, so... it's a very sympathetic. Uh... Right, exactly, and 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 the mothers, the mothers in the group, very much you feel that way towards them. Ugh, this film is tough, Adam. Yeah, wonderful, but basically, you we could unpack this for the rest of our lives. Yeah, because he the 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 director, with the help of Peter Loy, puts. Show po- puts on film a conundrum of 
society that is not yet solved. That has no definite solution. And yeah, so we're forced to just deal with it. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's, it's a great movie. But yeah, it's exactly. That's um, one, one, I suppose if we should try to find some problems with the movie. No. <laughs> you know, uh, so I thought I thought Policeman Walking Really Fast and sort of Benny Hill yeah. style is... Well, it was... Yeah, there was that. And there were there were times in the movie where it was a little slow. Um, but... Mm, really? I, yeah, I guess maybe. But I really didn't... Okay, a few of the talking scenes... Yeah. Were got a little bit like, oh, man. Especially when we were... T- you know, that scenes where they're switching between the two groups discussing. It's like, man, you guys yeah. do a lot of talking. Yeah. They were they were a little long and we could have, but you know at the same time they were very they were pointedly they're like they needed to be where they were so right you and know. and and they do bring up points that become significant yeah. later in the film about like the psychiatrist yeah. pointing out that like this man is mentally disturbed yeah and might but but I might also appear regular in his daily life and they, I mean they're bringing up valid points throughout yeah. the no you're right you're right you're so I really. There's not a lot. It didn't feel slow paced to me. I yeah. did not feel. I mean, maybe it's because I love to sit and watch hour long crime dramas anyway. Yeah. But it felt good to me. Uh, there were some weird bits, but they were mostly, I think, because somebody was basically pioneering an idea. Yeah. An entire type of like film, or like a film genre, in a, in a certain way. I mean, I don't know about silent crime dramas perhaps there were quite a few yeah um but it felt very original and so yeah there are some little stumbling points here and there but this is definitely going in my sort of yeah. of the criterion films we've watched so far my top 10 well like i like it's I up said, there with 400 blows before before you know i didn't watch this specifically for this um you know, I have seen this movie before. It has always been one of my favorite movies. So yeah, I I, I love it. I think I we don't have to find something wrong. It's a yeah. great film. No, it's a so great. I, movie. I, okay, I'll give you something wrong. Okay. Some of the silent sequences were a little too long. Yeah. Sometimes we go without sound long enough that I start going, "Hmm, is there something yeah. wrong with my Netflix streaming yeah. account?" Yeah, where 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 you actively start to think. Oh, uh, did something happen? Yeah, and that happened to me at least Right, once. right, yeah. I can only imagine the audience going, hmm, I wonder if the sound is broken. Yeah. But, uh, you know, at that point, you know, Lang, being Lang's first first sound movie, um, you know, maybe they weren't, it was less It was less of a issue mentally when things Yeah, were and quiet. I also kind of wonder if they had not yet grappled with the concept that you see in modern film, silence is bad. Yeah. There's yeah. always... Unless There's you're trying to make a really important dramatic point, yeah, silence is usually a no-no. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, one thing one thing he's pioneering here um, is is that when you have silence, it's when you upsetting. go back to having when you go back to having sound, it's that cue, it's that right. something Some... important's going on now. Yeah, and also I think he may or may not be pioneering the idea that a lack of sound is mentally yeah. upsetting to people yes. who are surrounded by sound. Yes. Because is... silence is not a thing in the world. That is up there, too. Yeah, and so, yeah, it's... Who knows? <laughs> right. but there's, a lot of, there's a lot of great... Lang is a great director. Um, this is one of know. my favorite Criterion films now. Yeah, check out some of his other work, too. Uh, I, I was telling Pat earlier about uh, a movie he made just prior to this called, uh, I believe, The Woman on the Moon. Uh, which is a sci-fi movie about a trip to the moon, and it is... It is I will movie. have to check it out. It's very, very well done as well. It is a silent movie, though. Um, but, yeah, it's, of course it is. This is his first sound movie. It's right, like right. So, and if he did it before this film, then, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, I watched it on YouTube, and I don't know if the music accompanying the YouTube version is uh, the original score, but it is amazingly epic and wonderful. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. Thank you once again for listening. Yeah, thank uh, you for joining us. Thank you for for talking to me, Pat. Always oh, a pleasure. Yes, uh, I will we'll be back see you uh, next time. We'll be next time to talk about David Lean's 1946 interpretation of Great Expectations. Um, 
And a very interesting fact about that, apparently David Lean did not read Great Expectations before making that movie. Hey, you know, uh, neither did I. Well, there you go. All right. We'll see you next time. Yeah, see you next time. Listening to Lost in Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via lostincriterion at withtwobrains.com or join us on the web at www.lost.